It's too hot for intros. The things I do for you. I could be out sunning my little tutors on the lawn. Two problems with that. I haven't got any tutors and I don't have a lawn. <sighs> Let's get on with it. Love is the Law by the Seahorses. Obviously you can learn it capo too, as it's played on the track, um, but if you can't always be bothered to get a capo out when you want to practice it, play it without. It's just going to sound whole tone lower. <laughs> remember hearing this riff for the first time in an old issue of a guitar magazine, I can't remember which one, but I remember thinking, I need to learn that immediately. It's very cool. And it is. But I tried and I tried and I tried and I couldn't get it. So I gave up on it and I didn't play it for about two or three months and I went off and did a load of other stuff. That's the wrong thing to do. If you want to play something, practice it and you will get it. Because when I came back three months later, I'd got three months better and I could play it. And I thought, wow, I could probably play that three months ago I'd have actually practiced it more. Um, but it's definitely um, a must learn riff if you wanna practice your hammer-ons, your pull-offs, because they are continuous throughout. Here's the first part we're gonna learn. All the frets that I'm gonna be calling out are in relation to the capo, okay? So you're gonna start with your second finger on fret five of the D, and then you're gonna pick that, pull off to the four, and then pull off to the open. After that, you're gonna hit the open A string and hammer on the second finger to the third fret. And then you're gonna put your index on the G string fret two, and then go and hit the open A. You want to let those notes bleed out over each other because they're just an octave apart. It's the same note. Here's the second part. That's very similar to what we've just done, so this should be really easy to get down. You're going to hammer on the open D to the second fret with the index finger and then hit the open G. And then you're going to hammer on the open A to the third fret again with the second finger, second fret of the G with the index, and then the open A again. Same thing. So it's just the first part that changed. Okay, here's the third part. So second finger on the third fret of the B, pull that off to the second fret and then pull that off to the open. Okay, then we're gonna hammer on the open G to second fret with the index finger, hit the open A, and then the second fret of the G again. Here's the last part of the lick. So you're gonna keep that index finger stationary on the second fret of the G throughout. And then we've got some little micro bends on the third fret of the A and the fourth fret with second and third finger. So starting on that third fret, second finger, little bend, hit the G, then hit the fourth fret of the A, little bend, G again, and then back to the third fret. And that's a little bit quicker. All together you've got this. Now one thing that I took away from this besides just hammer-ons and pull-offs was the ability to keep um, all the other strings tidy, muted, because your fingers are constantly like popping off and a pull-off isn't just away from the string, it's kind of down and away. You could consider it to be like plucking like that. You've got to get some power in the note, otherwise you lose it. Um, and it would be very easy to 
pull off and catch other strings and make it noisy. So um, the real skill here is to keep it absolutely um, crystal clear as you're playing it. <laughs> just had to nip out for a quick trim. It's too hot. Now, the verse. I like to grab a big E7 chord, so that's a normal E major chord, but with the pinky on the third fret of the B. You could just play an E if you wanted, but I like to play an E7. Then we're gonna strike the bottom part of the chord and then the top. Bass, then treble, right? Then I remove that third finger, still an E7, we're just putting another D in it, open D and you're going to go up, down, up. It's okay if you catch the kind of strings around it, but you want to focus your strokes on that D if you can. I then take my third finger on the third fret of the low E, slide up to the A, and then hit the open E. Same again with that E7 chord. Then we've got this kind of Page-esque, Stevie Ray Vaughan, whole lot of love lick. So slide from the second fret of the G up to the fourth fret, index finger on the third fret of the B, and then back. You can pull off to the open. Then pull off from the second fret of the D to the open, and then pick the second fret. Then add your third finger to the second fret of the B to create an A7 and kind of push rake over. Now we're going to come up to the fifth fret of the G string, semitone hammer on with the second finger to the six, and then double stops on the fifth fret of the B and the E. Back to the six, double stops again. Back to the E7, that page-esque lick again. Now where we would ordinarily finish on the second fret of the D here, we're actually going to put our index finger on the third fret of the A, and then you can bar with your third finger or your pinky across 5-5 five, five, and 5. 5-5 five, five, and 5 on the D, G and B, making a C bar chord in relation to the capo. There's a couple of ways you can play this next little chord. It's effectively like a B7 shape in relation to the capo. Um, but I hear this cool little slide, so I opted for this. Put your second finger on the fourth fret of the D, index on the third fret of the G, pinky on the fifth fret of the B, strike the D string and then slide it up to, not in relation to the capo now, because this will help you, it's hard to count sometimes, um, fret 11. Now if you're writing this out as a tab, it's always going to be in relation to the capo, but when you're trying to teach someone and call things out, it kind of gets confusing. You have to start counting, subtracting, it's like, ugh. So, not in relation to the capo, you're on frets 10, 11, 12. In relation to the capo, minus two, you're on eight, nine, 10. Now when we get there, you're going to pick the B string, G string, D string, and then the open A in this rhythm. The other thing you could do after that C chord is just bring it back, put your pinky on the fifth fret of the high E, then hit the open A and you've got that B7 shape we talked about. It just doesn't give you the same kind of like zip up the fretboard, and I'm a fan of that. Now we've got this cool little lick. 
So start with your index finger on the fourth fret of the A, hammer onto the five with the second, pull back off to the four, and then pull off to open. Come back to the second fret of the A, give it a kind of cheeky suggestive pull. Then you can either pull off or pick it open. And then grab the third fret of the low E with the second finger. Another cheeky little pull, then the open E. You can even give that um, second fret of the A a bit of vibrato. I chuck that in there. So that last bit goes like this. Now that open E we chucked in at the end is actually the first note of your second repeat. So the first verse actually repeats twice and the second time it ends slightly differently, like this. So what you're going to do after you hit that E7, you can do an up, down, up little percussive mute where we just release the finger pressure here. And then you're going to chuck on a B7 chord and do this rhythm. And that takes us straight into the chorus. chorus again opens on that E shape. The rhythm now just kind of opens up for the first time and it goes like this. So I don't want to be too pedantic about the rhythm here. You know, strumming down then up. You've complained about that in the past and I do read the comments. So hopefully you can just follow along with what you hear and see. But if you are struggling, you know where to go. So we're interrupting that E rhythm pattern with this glorious riff. You can leave your index finger on the first fret of the G string, strike the open E, then come back to the G and hammer that index finger to the second fret. Hit the open E again, G again, pull off the second finger back to the index. So it goes the other way. And take your third finger down to the fourth fret of the D string and pull that off to open. As I mentioned in the introduction, if you are playing riffs that combine fretted notes and open strings, maybe pull offs, inevitably you are going to accidentally catch open strings, make some noise, unwanted noise. So, what can we do about it? Well, for example, that fourth fret at the end when I pull that off to the open D. It'd be very easy for me to catch that G and pull it off to open as well. Um, but notice my index finger, it just very gently comes down to the G string after I do the pull off and just touches it ever so slightly. Kills it dead. So it's not just a pull off away like this. I've still got my hand here keeping things tidy and I'm pulling the third finger off and away. Little things like that are just what I consider to be like useful tips to um, try and like incorporate into everyday playing to keep things just a bit tidier. And then it means you can dig in, have more fun, and you don't sound like this. I used to sound like that. I still do. I just don't put that on YouTube. Private collection. Right, let's move to that next chord of the chorus. A very simple D5, you can just strike that twice. Come back to that first fret of the G again, and this time you're going to pick these notes. One, two, one. Then come down to the second fret of the D. Now 
Now, just before we change to this A5 here, I like to do a finger swap. And I catch those extra two pick notes, second fret of the D. And it means now that when I strike the A for the next bar, my finger's already prepped. And that rhythm's gonna be down, 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 up. And then we've got this cool little lick. Start with third finger on the second fret of the A, slide into the fourth fret. You wanna hear both notes. Come up to the second fret of the D, hit it once, then hit it again, hammer and pull off to the fourth fret. And then pick four, two on the A string again. Second repeat starts the same. Now we just go to a regular D using that same rhythm as before. Then change to E. And at that point, after the first verse, you can just go straight into the intro riff. The next time that we play the chorus, it's identical, but at the end there's just a couple of extra chords and it goes like this. Last time we finished this section on that E chord, this time we're going to add a D and an A after it. Um, and the D rhythm's a bit special because intermittently the fingers are going to be coming off and it gives us a really cool effect. Here's the rhythm. and that'll drop you into the really cool bass solo. So coming out of that very holy, choral, glorious middle section, We've got a time signature change, we're going into 3-4, and we've just got um, this cool little chord progression. So the chords we're going to need, I'll run through them first, then I'll show you just a simple way to strum them. D, B, A sus4, A, G sus4, G, F sharp, F sharp sus4, back to F sharp. So what I do is I just pretty much go down, 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 up for each chord. And that's one, two, three, and one, two, three, and. Now on the D, I lift my fingers up for that last and before changing to the B. It gives us that musical breath I like to talk about. I do take it off after the B because B to A sus4 is not the simplest of changes, but A sus4 to A, you can be a little bit more subtle with that. A to G sus4, again, not the simplest of changes, but once you're there, it's just the pinky that moves. If you're unfamiliar with these um, sus4 bar chord shapes, literally, if you had a G major on, putting the pinky up one string and tactfully muting the D just gives you a sus4 chord. Move that down now to F sharp, back to 4-4 four, four here, 
It's why it might sound a bit weird on the record, but now you understand we've gone from 3-4 to 4-4, four, four, you'll get it. Because um, now our accenting goes to 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... Now we have to learn the chorus all over again, in a different key. Cheers, John. Appreciate it. But seriously, because we've already learned it, it'll actually help you a lot. You'll understand the mechanics of it and all the different rhythms and techniques to use. We just have to change the chord positions and where we're playing those very fancy riffs. So here's the first part. So instead of the E, we can just play an A5. Hopefully if you've got that rhythm down, you should be able to play it straight away. Exact same rhythm and concept, but that riff is now index finger on the fifth fret of the high E. Second and third fingers are gonna hammer on from six to seven on the G. Back to the high E, and then pull off. Then I like to take my index finger to the 4th fret of the G string and pull that off to open. Again, notice that my index is doing a little bit of crafty muting so that I don't just go like that on the open B. Look at that look of disgust. It's making my glasses twitch. Saved it. Right, what's the next chord? It's G5. You could play a G if you wanted to, but I can't be asked. So I'm just gonna play a G5. Same rhythm as we did before, two down strokes. And now we're gonna play um, this little riff here. So it's just index finger on the fourth fret of the D string, fifth fret, pick them all back and forth, come down to the fifth fret of the A, and then hit it two more times. Like that. Imagine if Rick Beato's like that little Instagram things he does were that simple. Pick this note twice. Like that. Now we move to a D chord, same rhythm as the A from before, down, 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 up. And now we're gonna take that very kind of cool Hendrixy riff and just move it to the open E string. So instead of this, we're gonna do it here with hammer-ons and pull-offs. Open E to second fret, open A to second fret. See if you can transpose that down. Same technique, just different fingers. That last second fret to open E, you can kind of catch it with a little bit of a pull-off because then you can slam that index finger down for the A5 because we're going for a second repeat. Back to that G5 again, this time I'm going to do the full extended rhythm. Then we go to the A5. To the D, and if you're feeling extra fruity, you can chuck a couple of those little opens in. Then we're going to move to E and play this cool little pattern. Just start by striking the E chord, and then I actually take both fingers off in a little unit, even though you don't need to, but I do what I want, as we know. And you're gonna repeatedly strike that D string and just hammer onto the second fret. 
and do that four times, then go down to the low E, back to the D string, and then the low E again. Now the outro lick is even cooler than the intro lick, isn't it? Or is it? I think so. Because it comes out of nowhere and you've been taken on this little journey and a key change and a time signature change, like what's coming next? Oh wow, he's just made that riff even cooler and even more difficult because string skipping, but it makes it worthwhile learning. Start by reminding yourself of the first half of the intro lick. And then see if you can just move it all down one string, play it straight away. C, two for one. What a deal. Now for the next part, again, identical. But the pull-offs aren't on the B string anymore, they're on the high E. Then open D, hammer on to second fret, low E, back to second fret. And you know the rest. Like I said, it's just the same riff stretched out. I'm actually sweating. All those hammer-ons and pull-offs, chord changes, key changes, time signature changes. What's he playing at? Capo 2. Messing around. It was enjoyable though, wasn't it? If you did enjoy this video, hit like, subscribe, the bell next to it. I don't want to have to tell you again, all right? I'm sick of it. Also, if you struggled, you couldn't keep up. You thought, what on earth is this incredibly good looking man talking about? That's me, by the way. Then consider heading over to my Patreon where you can get tabs, backing tracks, maybe even a little, I don't know, whatever you want, ice cream. I'm not buying you ice cream. Get a grip. Anyway, it's been emotional. I've got nothing to throw at the camera. Um, and I've decided I'm not going to do that anymore because last time my hat actually hit the camera, hit stop record, but it kind of knocked the screen and then I panicked for a second. It was a good throw, but I'm not doing it, all right? So I'm just going to do this instead. See you later.